Hey everyone, my name is Rui, and we are here. This is going to be week number two of the UBL, and we are up against Silver Beanie and uh, his Crystal Palace hands. And uh, this is a really wild matchup, right? So he has a lot of big threats, right? So first of all, I love the Araquanid. Um, Darmanitan is a monster, even though I never like using it. Uh, Mega Manectric, again, is a monster, even though I never like using it. But also, he has uh, the Porygon 2, which is going to be a huge, huge struggle to try to get through. Uh, does also have the Tornadus and Silvali, right? So he didn't have any Steel type on his draft. So I really did think that Silvali Steel made the most sense. Otherwise, I think he would kind of struggle to break uh, Clefable in most situations. But at the same time, it does leave him wide open to my Mega Camera of Tier. Uh, however... He's going to be able to pretty freely parting shot in and out, and it's going to make things super difficult for me. So it's going to be something that I just kind of have to manage. But at the same time, I do feel like Silvali Steel is going to be one of the most manageable. It is going to prevent uh, a couple things. So first of all, I do have a Mono Moon Blast Clefable that's meant to calm mind up and kind of go in. And I do have a Nihilego that is Z-Move. Uh, it was primarily actually for the Feeny with a Z-Sludge Wave. And it does a whole lot of damage to things like the Porygon. But with it being a Silvali Steel, it's going to make things really difficult for my Nihilego. But I think I can manage it. Again, um, my best answer answer is probably going to be getting a big earth power off with my necrozma or getting uh some big uh thunderbolts off with my life orb raikou and with that i'm just gonna get into the match um i probably couldn't even remember what i let off with but i guess i'm going to see in just a second uh, I would imagine I let off with a Raikou because uh, I believe he didn't oh no I let off with any Lego yeah this felt pretty much free here um almost as free as the as the uh raikou but uh this was a weird situation because he had to fear if i was a roxy move but i also know that I ne that i never really ko'd with a straight up power gem so i felt like i had to switch out but he also feels like he has to switch out so i go into my raikou as he also switches out into something else um he goes out into the sovali which is not great but again this is one of my going to be one of my checks throughout the match to this thing so i can just full switch out try to gauge as much damage as i can and this is actually pretty darn specially defensive silvali steel and i did check the bottom screen it was confirmed to be steel uh you can't always trust that color to, to your eyes so i just had to check the bottom screen as he is free departing shot as you do go into serena but this felt like it gave me the most options um he, it does outspeed a lot of his team uh and i can u-turn out but uh, it does leave me wide open to, the, to that Armanitan, which can very freely come in now. And I really only have one super duper solid switch into to the Armanitan. And that's going to be, I believe, a pretty much max defense um, Mega Camera up. But it can come in here. It can take a Flare Blitz and scare this thing out, which uh, is in fact what happens. I take it okay. But again, this is going to be a very strong, uh, probably Adamant Scarf um, Darmanitan and... By the way that he plays it throughout the match, I do believe that it that it is scarfed, but uh, I believe I pull a double here because uh, he did have a very easy camera uh, uh, um, Arachnid play. But no, I do stay in. Uh, I go for something. Oh, I, oh, I believe I go for rocks here. I believe I just go for rocks here um, because yeah, he did have to switch out and uh, he did have three mods that were that were weak to to South Rock and his removal was uh, not the best. So regardless, I'm gonna go back out into Serena and I'm probably going to eat up a liquidation and from here he can leech life me but I can also u-turn out and try to make a pivot on that play so I just kind of wanted to gauge the damage from liquidation see um what kind of Arachnid this would be and I believe um this damage confirmed max attack adamant at the time but um regardless I, I did decide to kind of hold my ground and go for the u-turn as he goes out into the tornado so now i'm in a position where i can bring in my raikou and my raikou can have a pretty decent time again my raikou can very freely volt switch in and out uh with the with the kind of makeup of his team and uh it applies pressure with the rocks as well as well i, I can freely and after this thing mega evolves but uh, I felt free to kind of Thunderbolt here, and uh, I give him the Lightning Ride. I honestly did not even think that this was the biggest deal in in, in the world. I knew that he could go into in, in Manectric, but I didn't really think this was a very good play. 
or or like it would be like a game breaking play if if he did that, right? So my thinking was, okay, I think he has the thunderbolt, so I can go into my mega camera, and then uh, he probably has EP water. So once so after the HP water, I I can pivot out into uh, something else and. Uh, Probably my Serena, and that'll get me into a decent position to again U-turn out and start and start doing some things. But he goes directly for the HP water, and again, I didn't really think that this was a, that big of a deal. Um, it does limit my switches into Darmanitan, but it's all but Darmanitan is also going to be on somewhat of a timer with the rocks and the flareless recoil and and all that stuff. So, uh, he did read me, but at the same time, I didn't feel like the biggest deal in the world in this situation. So now, uh. I bring in my Minocrosma to take a hit, and he goes into the Porygon 2. Now, here was a very interesting situation for me, because I didn't bring Toxic on any of my Pokemon because of the Tapu Fini, uh, which he left on the bench, and the fact that he doesn't have the Fini pretty much makes me think that this Porygon 2 has Toxic, which uh, I don't think it ever went for throughout this entire match. Oh, no. Maybe it did right here. Yeah, it does go for Toxic right here. So, it never got a Toxic off on my team th throughout the match, but... Um, but uh, that was my first immediate thought that now it has the the uh, toxic because the Feeny was on the bench, right? So it forced me to, to go into my Nihil Lego, which does allow me to, to, to set up a substitute, but it's not going to do much against this um, Silvali other than kind of allow me to uh, try to get off some damage with with Power Gem. And honestly, from here on out, it's looking to me like my only like my best way of dealing with a Silvali is going to be to try to wear it down with a bunch of hits throughout, throughout the match because it's not going to be able to recover up that well and between rocks and the big uh volt switch that I got off earlier in the match that gets that gives me a little bit of a head start in terms of trying to wear this thing down but it's just going to be, be a matter of trying to wear this thing down over time because uh I don't have any really fantastic ways of dealing with this Silvali so uh it's going to be able to to, to switch in and out uh, my Serena is going to bait in the Darmanitan, which again, I don't have the Mega Camera up to, to go into anymore. But, um, essentially I'm in a position where I kind of have to, uh, sack something off. And in this situation, it felt like, uh, that should be the Nihilego. I thought there was a chance that he would want to go for the U-turn as well. So, um, I figured this would give me the best opportunity, but regardless, Nihil Lego has a lot of HP and uh, it can kind of deal some damage with the recoil. But now I'm in a position where I need something that can take a hit, and now I'm down to my Necrozma, all right? So, uh, again, at, at the time, I didn't think that, that the Mega Camera was that big of a deal. Mega Camera would have come in uh, the most clutch in this, mom in this moment in particular, right? Uh, again, I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world because I do have a Necrozma that can take a hit really, really well. Although, uh, it's going to severely limit my Necrozma in terms of uh, doing more, doing a lot of damage throughout the uh, shape of this match, right? Because my Necrozma, uh, you, you guys saw, was called my Necrozma. So, it really was meant to kind of take a lot of hits. Get, get big in terms of Calm Minds and then deal big damage. And it's never going to get that opportunity now. Um, although, uh, I did think in this moment that I, that I was, that I might be able to Moonlight up on the Araquanid, but then, uh, after I, I believe after I made that decision, I, uh, did some calcs and I realized that that was never going to be really the best situation for me, so, uh, I expected the Thunderbolt, I go into my Serena to kind of eat that up, and, uh, now... Here, he was in a weird position where he, I guess he expected me to pull a double or me to do something weird, but he could have just gone for the flamethrower and done a lot of damage to my Serena, but him not doing that just allows me to get a U-turn off and go into the Clefable. So now I'm in a weird position where I kind of feel like I have to, um, make a few predictions and kind of like deal damage to, to his team just with Moonblast, but as soon as I click Calm Mind, I realize that, of course, he's, he has the, um... Savali Seal to go into, so this was never going to be a good situation for me. This was a sizable misplay on my part. If I just gone for the Moonblast, or if I'd done something else, um, maybe I, I could have gotten a little bit more chip damage on Silvali, and maybe that would have mattered for the overall shape of this match, but, um, I think I just clicked Calm Mind a little bit too early. Oh, and also, um, this match was only, like, 23 turns, but it spanned, like, 57 minutes, I think it was, or, or like, 50 three minutes or something to that effect 
but the timer was under 10 minutes by the time the, the, this match ended. A lot of my time was spent um, waiting for uh, my opponent to make his moves, which was to totally fine, but uh, it didn't make for the most entertaining situation, and... Um, and uh, I think... It kind of affected the way that I played in terms of um, getting getting a little bit impatient on the, on some certain plays, like that Clefable play. Um, I think I could have thought that out better, but I was in a little bit of a mode where I was rushing my turns just to kind of hopefully not let it go to timer. But by the by the time it got to like half an hour, and I saw how few turns uh, we'd gone through, I really started to you know get into my mind how much the timer would play a role in this match. And again. We went through about 53 minutes, and yeah, we only went through about 35 turns. And honestly, we went through about like 10 turns in, in the last um, like 10 minutes of, of the match because because we were just like uh, do, you, doing our moves relatively quickly at like towards the end of the match. But uh, in the beginning and, and and the middle areas of of the match, these turns were taking a very long time. But regardless, we're in a situation now where we're just like. Um, <clears throat> my Clefable's in here, and I think I'm in a position now where I think I have to position my Clefable to outright win this matchup, right? My Clefable is Magic Guard, so he's never going to, uh, want to Toxic into it, but my, my thinking is that I can Calm Mind up, and if I'm over 50%, then I can, uh, take a multi-attack from the, from the, um, from the Silvali, but that never really feels like a winning strategy for me, and in this moment, I'm thinking, okay, my biggest... Wincon is going to be the Raikou at this point, right? So I really want to get this thing out of out of the way so I can start to um, position my my end game a, a, a little bit better. I want to position. I want to put myself in a position where my Raikou can win this match without uh, Michael Fable taking a whole lot of damage uh, in this end game. But uh, I am still really scared about this Porygon too, and more importantly, I'm scared about um, him trying to make like some pivot plays. So me going into Serena and then you turning out, that was mainly because I was afraid of a lot of the pivots that he could go into my Pokemon. So a lot of these plays are going to seem uh, a little bit uh, unusual, but I didn't want to put him in a position where he can very freely go into a Mon that puts a lot of pressure onto my team and um, it kind of goes off the rails from there. I played this super duper safely because... Um, Raikou and Clefable could still win this match, I, I, I felt like, in my head, but, um, I just had to play this endgame as carefully as I, as I could. In any case, um, I end up going into, uh, Serena here as he goes for a dang sword dance, right? And I didn't think too much about this in, in the moment. Um, I still felt okay in this moment, but again, this was a, this was a moment where, uh, if I got some Moonblast chip, uh, in, in the, in the earlier match, then maybe I, I would have been in a position to get some more Moonblast, um, and damage on the Swords Dance, uh, on the Swords Dance turn, and it could have maybe done something somewhere, but regardless, uh, what really scares me is when he goes for the Flare Blitz, and now, uh, I really can't go into Michael Fable anymore, and, um, or not the Flare Blitz, the Flame Charge. And I have to go into Raikou, and I have to basically eat up half of my HP to this Silvali. And now, I'm in a pretty rough position because I just give up so much HP to this Silvali on my Raikou. And it looks like my Raikou is no longer going to be able to win this match outright. As he is able to go into uh, the Manectric here. So, uh, I think Flame Charge on that Silvali is going to uh, end up kind of being the game changer where... I really had no real counterplay. I had to give up a lot of my HP just to be able to deal with it. And in the end, it just allows him to go into uh, to go into the the, the Manectric, take me out, and uh, now he's able to Volt Switch freely out into... Oh, and he gets a crit. But he's able to Volt Switch freely into uh, Araquanid here, and I am max defense, but Clefable doesn't have the best defenses, and... Uh, this is really built to call mind up. I mean, maybe if I had brought Cosmic Power, that this match could have gone a lot differently. But regardless, uh, now I'm in a position where, honestly, uh, now I'm in a position where uh, I think at this point we were down to maybe like 15 minutes on the timer, maybe something like that. And uh, I had been waiting so long, and I, and I was. A little bit frustrated from from a lot of how this match played out so i was going to just uh 
soft boil it up until I couldn't soft boil it up anymore and I was going to uh, try to get like be that guy and get like one less differential point on on my uh, overall record but then I realized how much damage liquidation was doing and obviously it's doing over half it's never gonna be that great of a situation for me but it I think I think if I'm ever in a position where I can get a moon a, a calm mind off then um depending on how this arachnid is built a moon blast in that situation could potentially be huge but then he gets the crit and uh this was when really all hope was lost and i felt like whatever i was doing with my soft blows and all this nonsense it didn't even feel worth it to me anymore it didn't even feel like fun or like even worth my time at this point so i just go for the moon blast and it does decent enough damage but uh and maybe a maybe a plus one crit would have uh been able to take out the the arachnid and from there it didn't really have the best answers to my arachnid to my um club able but that's gonna be how, how the match ends um definitely a handful of misplays on my part that i do wish that it hadn't have happened but uh ultimately it's going to be the dang uh flame charge on his silvali that silvali allowed him to do that much damage to my raikou and um it ultimately put my Raikou in a position where it had to take a bunch of damage and I think in the end game I could have switched around and won potentially with Label and Raikou on their own but that's going to be how the match ends. I do kind of wish that I had maintained better answers to that Armanitan and uh, I think it's going to be something that I try to fix up uh, pretty soon on this team. I think I'm going to make at least one transaction that really makes sense to my team coming up really really soon but before that happens we will be playing our next week against automatic and uh yeah that's gonna be it for me uh i really do like this team i wish uh necrozma had had a moment to kind of uh do more overall damage to the team raikou proved that it was really solid in this matchup and overall i think this team uh kind of worked well together and Mega Camera uh, uh, is fun, although I, it is forced to kind of be my fire switch in a lot of the time. And hopefully that won't be the case moving forward. But once again, that's going to be for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the uh, UBL, the ICBA, and um, a League War, as well as a potential season of the PGBL coming up really, really soon. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. going to be once again out.